Hi, I'm Dr. Randy Martin with the Marcus Heart Valve Center at Piedmont Hospital in Atlanta. I'm pleased to be joined today by my colleague, a fabulous interventional cardiologist, Dr. Vivek Rajagopal. Vivek is also the co-director of the Transcatheter Valve Program here. Vivek, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. So one of the, one of the more uh, interesting developments really uh, has been the transcatheter approach to mitral valve disease, and certainly the Mitra Clip has been really an innovator in that. Tell me a little bit about what the Mitra Clip is. So for decades, we've repaired the mitral valve with open heart surgery. Right. Cardiac surgeon opens the chest, stops the heart, and repairs the valve. This is a minimally invasive beating heart procedure where we deliver uh, the so-called mitral clip through a catheter. So it's a transcatheter mitral valve repair. We deliver it through a groin vessel mm -hmm. and deliver it to the heart valve and cinch it down. And it's uh, really pretty amazing. I mean, yeah, it really is. And we're going to have a chance to see it. You know, we've had a chance to visit with you and your colleague, Dr. Chuck Ballard, who who do these and, and have had a chance to be involved in some of these in the cath lab. So why don't we go in there and take a peek at this and tell, tell me a little bit about what's going on. So one of the most important things that we do is review each patient, their clinical history, their imaging information, any issues that we might have with the procedure. Of course, we view the images with uh, echocardiographers such as yourself. All of this is very, very important even before we start the procedure uh, so that we do this safely and successfully. And here you are, so you've, you're, it really is a teamwork, and we had a little shot of the clip there. And here you and Chuck are actually delivering the system or getting ready to deliver the clip. And it's really a, a procedure that's it's best done with two uh, experienced operators so that one person can steer the clip, the other person can grasp the leaflets. Right. And there was Sarah Mabasri, one of my colleagues in Echo, and we're looking at the Echo images. You all are seeing the Echo images too. That's true. It's, it's a procedure that's very much driven by echocardiography. Uh, we do have some fluoroscopy, so we use our x-ray machine right. as well, but uh, I cannot emphasize uh, the role of echocardi echocardiography enough. So, so really, it's a, it's a lot of people, but with everybody with having sort of complementary jobs and, and really steering the proper deployment of, of the device. Is that correct? Absolutely. Okay, so, so we've had a little uh, sort of tease as to what goes on. Let's take a look at a case, because I know you've got a really interesting case. Tell me a little bit about this patient. Sure. So this is the type of patient that we're talking about. We're ta this is an 88-year-old woman. She had severe osteoporosis and very frail. She's hobbling around in a walker, but she's suffering from heart failure. And, and Vivek, she, she represents the, the current indications in the commercial use of this clip, so-called prohibitive risk for mitral valve surgery for a primary or degenerative mitral valve problem. Is that correct? Absolutely. You know, again, the gold standard for mitral valve repair is surgical repair. Mm -hmm. And so the indication is for patients with severe symptomatic mitral regurgitation from a primary problem of the okay. mitral valve deemed prohibitive risk by uh, a heart team. So she, she fits that. She's Absolutely. got heart failure. She's, um, so let's take a look. This is her transesophageal echo. You've got great views here. It looks like a foil portion of P2 that you can right. easily see. Is that correct? And then when we turned on the color coming up here, as this is just another view, we turn on the car, we see torrential jet of mitral regurgitation directed anteriorly, so we know it's P2. Correct. Now, this is a cool view, the 3D TE view, and in, in the upper panel, you clearly see P2 prolapsing uh, with that big ruptured cord coming back. Right. 3D is very complementary to 2D, not only in defining the mechanism, but steering our clip and determining the, uh, our results. It's very helpful. So, Vivek, she's got, so she has really a central posterior leaflet um, prolapse. Should, should be a good target for you guys to clip, is that correct? Absolutely, absolutely. If we can target that flail segment, if we can secure it back to the other leaflet, I think we can reduce the MR successfully. Okay, so let's, let's take a look and tell me what you're doing here. This is so the first step is getting transeptal access. That is going from the right atrium into the left atrium, and this is an exceptionally important step. This will direct how easy or difficult the rest of the procedure will be. In this case, this is a bicable view, so we have brought down our mullen sheath and our needle. Right. And you can see that the needle is tenting against the septum, and we're trying to see if we're in a good location at so this we, point. So we see the SVC to the right, and obviously you brought the catheter up. Uh, the 
through the IVC and, and you're really poking up on the, um, right. on the septum. Okay, and then this next view, tell me what's going on here. This is what you would call the height or perhaps the depth from the mitral annulus. Really for this procedure, you need to be more than 3.5 centimeters away, preferably four or maybe a little bit more than four in the case of a flail segment. If you are too close to the mitral valve, it is very difficult to steer the catheter down to the valve and have enough running room. So in, in this situation, if, if the aorta down in, in, in the image is anteriorly and you're, you're posteriorly, so you've, you've, and you measure this and feel Correct. that this is a good distance. So once you get into the atrium, you're gonna have lots of room to, to, to right. steer the catheter, is that correct? That's right. So this is a really critical point of the, of the exam. So here, tell us what's happened here. So here, this is a short axis view. You see the aorta down to the right. Um, the right atrium is off to the le bottom left and the left atrium is up top. We've crossed. Again, we, you wanna be in a relatively posterior area. If you're too close to the aorta, it really makes the whole procedure quite a bit more difficult. So you've crossed and then we'll go here and just a nice 3D picture showing the, the, act, showing the, um, uh, the uh, wire across and everything. And then we'll go, so what's, what's happening here? So we've obtained tra uh, transeptal access and okay. the wires across and we're dilating the septum with the dilator of the sheath. Okay. And, and the, I see the, the structure in the right atrium, and of course I know what it is, but tell us what it is, tell our viewers what it is. So that's the transeptal guide catheter. That is the tube that is gonna help us deliver the clip. Okay. And it's a pretty large tube, so you really wanna have a good position and dilate the septum so adequately. This is kind of a cool view, because you can actually see the little transeptal um, gap that you've created there, and you've got, that's, that looks like the the guide wire. Now, this is a good good view here. What is this? The guide in the left atrium. This is the guide, and and this is a neat view. You can see that it's relatively close to the aorta. So, with TD, 2D uh, TE, we're going to be guiding it more posteriorly away okay. from the aorta. Certainly, before we introduce the clip, we don't want to be around those vital structures when we're putting the clip into the left atrium. So, this is just a, a great shot with 3D TE, where you can actually see it and see the tip of it. Um, Tell me what's going on with our hemodynamics here. So we can measure the left atrial pressure, and the left atrial pressure should really be, I would say, less than 15 for sure, right. ideally 10 or less. You're looking at an average left atrial pressure of 23, and a V wave of 62, which is really, it's almost like someone's diastolic blood pressure just surging back into the left atrium and into her lungs. And that's why, this is what she's feeling. So she's got uh, obviously severe MR with marked hemodynamic compromise from that. Right. So he here we are, you've, or have you now introduced the device into the left atrium? Right, so the clip is in the left atrium now. And again, we're gonna be advancing it until it's uh, in a position that we can steer. We wanna get a keep away from the left atrial appendage, mm -hmm. which you see towards the right. Mm -hmm. And again, through a series of iterative steps using 2D and 3D echo, we're gonna be able to do this safely. So let's, let's move forward. So this is a, just another nice 3D view of, of the device. And then, so here you are heading toward the target, heading toward the mitral valve, is that correct? That's correct. And again, you can see that it's a little anterior, so we're gonna just steer the guide more, more posteriorly. And now the really, really neat thing about this procedure is that you can target the clip exactly where your pathology is. Okay. So you can see where the flail segment is, you can see where the mitral regurgitation jet is, and then you can alter the position of the clip depending on that. And that, is that what you all have done here? I mean, because I see the flail P2 that we can see in there. Right, and when you, when you see color, you'll see that it's very close to where we want to be. So you've actually, it almost looks like uh, the clip is into the color jet or you're splitting the color jet so that that's makes right. you think that's where you need to be. And here's just another good shot where you can see the actual, uh, where, the, where the lesion is on the valve. Right. And this is the 3 dte view. Tell me, um, I know what we're seeing, but tell, tell our viewers what we're seeing. So this is the so-called surgeon's view where we're looking down into the left ventricle. So we're, it's as if we're in the left atrium looking down into the left ventricle. And this is a very, very helpful view for orienting the arms. You know, Randy, when we open the clip, we want these arms to be perpendicular to the line of co-optation of the valve. 
And depending on where you are, the angle can change. And 3D is really, really helpful in allowing us to align those arms with so, the valve. So you can see here that you're not all, you're, you're, you're close to being perpendicular. Right. And it looks like you're lined up a little bit between A2 and maybe P2, P3, and, but you haven't really advanced it in. So it's not a bad position, is it? It's a reasonable position to start. We can do some fine tuning, but I think right. it's a good start. Okay. So, Tell me, this, is, this is, a, is a neat shot, so you see the arms open. So what are you doing here? So once we're confident about arm angle, mm -hmm. we want to enter the ventricle. And usually using 2D echocardiography, we can enter the ventricle. We want to see if the catheter shifts or spins as we go in, because that can be a sign that we should stop and retract and reposition. It looks pretty good as it's entering the ventricle right now. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, it really does. So. You're in the ventricle now, we see the open arms, what are you going to do now? Well, at this point what we do is we close the arms a little bit so that it's in a catching angle. Okay. And then once we're happy with that, we're going to start slowly pulling the catheter up and see if those leaflet, leaflets will lap into the arms of the clip. And, and what's happened here? Well, here we're seeing if we are uh, still within the context of the color jet, which right, we are. Which you are. And and now you can see us coming up to the leaflets and you can yeah, see, cool. you can actually see the anterior leaflet lapping into the arm very nicely. The posterior leaflet uh, might not be grabbed, it may, right? It, might, yeah. it may or may not be. Um, so this is, this is really there. tricky. I mean, this is yeah. incredibly difficult. So you really want to see that you grab both of those leaflets and that they have, their tips have restricted motion. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And once we grasp, and we tighten the clip a little bit, we really want to make sure the leaflets have inserted into the clip. So here it clearly to me looks like the anterior leaflet, which is off to the right of, of the image, and, and the posterior to the left are stable and in the really grab now. Very much so, and again, we're gonna be looking at different multiplane angles with a 2D T and also a 3D T. And this is the, obviously the speed is going fast, but this is the, is the, um, the device. And here we are with the 3D TE showing us, um, it looks like you haven't released the clip yet, but you've really got a double orifice. And you went right where that pathology was. You went right down the, down the P2 area. Right. I think you see two things here. You see a nice double orifice, which is really the whole point of this so-called transcatheter alfieri type stitch. And I don't see the P2 flail, the Correct. flail segment coming up. So it looks like we have so gotten the pathology. Perfect, perfect grab on this. Um, so this is a, is a static and the clip has been released? It's released, so hopefully it's good. Good. Well, we're going to find out, aren't we? So that's a, that's a beautiful shot now. The clip's released, and we're again looking from the atrial surface. So if we look from the ventricle uh, side, we could see the clip. But a nice double orifice, isn't it? It's a nice double orifice, and at the end we had very mild MR. Let's take a look. So this is, now you're back to showing us the hemodynamics. Uh, tell me what's happened here. So we've dropped the mean pressure in the left atrium from the 20s to the 5-6 range. Right. This is a normal left atrial pressure. So, so you've basically fixed her. That's correct. And you had, with her, as I recall, you had not a very minimal amount of MR. It was really mild. I mean... And, you know, Vivek, the, the data has, is really pretty good now in using this in these degenerative or primary MR that, that not only does the longevity look pretty good, patients' symptoms get better, isn't that correct? The data are very robust in not only we see reverse remodeling, so the hearts actually shrink and they mm -hmm. get stronger, but more importantly, the way patients feel. They feel dramatically better. And, and the interesting thing, because we're so conscious in surgical repair of mitral valve to make sure when the patient leaves the OR that they don't have any MR, any residual mitral regurge, the data, which is really surprising to me, has shown that even if you have, if you went from four plus to two plus MR or less, that you don't have to have complete resolution of the MR for these patients to do well. And I think it's important to note that that reduction in MR occurred in the learning phase, the learning right. curve of this technology. I think a lot of experience centers are routinely getting even better results than that. Well, this is a beautiful result. And I know that, that you've, you've um, certainly learned a lot as, as you all have built up your extensive experience. Where do we stand today with the Mitra clip? What's it indicated for and in, in commercially released uh, in this country? 
Right, so the FDA indication is for severe symptomatic mitral regurgitation in patients who have a primary abnormality of the mitral valve. What I mean by that is you, for example, have a prolapse or flail, or in some cases the annulus is quite dilated, and in a patient that is deemed prohibitive risk by a heart team that includes a interventional cardiologist, um, also imaging cardiologists right. are very important, and a cardiac surgeon. If you're prohibitive risk and you meet all those criteria, then it's indicated for that purpose. And, that, and, and, and uh, certainly the, the results, and, and not everybody is, is um, I mean, it could be a varying type of pathology, but you guys have really learned and known, uh, have, have experienced how to attack even differing pathologies than this. Well, it's, it's amazing the versatility of this technology. The nice thing is you have 3D, 2D imaging. It can really guide you to the pr primary pathology. But also, we can put in additional clips if we right. need to. Right. So, for example, in this particular situation, if despite clipping the primary pathology, she had an incidental side jet or residual MR, we right. could go in with a second clip, and we've done that a fair number of times and had good results. Well, it, I mean, the, the technology looks very exciting, certainly. It, uh, you all have learned an immense amount and now are very experienced at doing this. And I think it's, it's really revolutionized our approach to how we help patients who might be at prohibitive risk for surgery. So thanks very much for sharing this with us. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. We hope that you'll come back because we'll have a lot more uh, exciting technology on this particular uh, device called the MitraClip.